CBC just ended. I finally have some time to go over Alatreon Blade Ma Oh, that's his back. Alatreon Blade Master. In all his glory, I love the armor set. He is a nod to Alatreon, the second to last boss in Monster Hunter Iceborne, and he looks magnificent. You see his health booster here. And the scythe that he has is truly magnificent. Just the sight to behold. I worked so hard to get him. I have not seen any content creators works on Alatreon or using him in Hydra or anything. I read his kit once, decided he seemed like a pretty good Hydra champ, but I haven't read his kit since then, so we're going to do that right now. His A1 attacks one enemy, then has a, what is that, 55% chance of increasing the duration of two random buffs on an individual on each individual ally so each ally on your team is going to have two random buffs increased by one turn damage is based on hp he's a support hp based champion a2 aoe increase defense and a shield all allies two turns the shield is 30 percent of this champion's max hp so what we need to do is build them with as much hp as we can and then if the boss is a target the buffs are going to be protected which is nice because there is the head of mischief which steals buffs and it's extremely annoying we have ah uh, the cleanser booster that's what this is it's the cleanser booster in monster hunter you put this on the floor you stab it into the ground and it has different effects it cleanses debuffs or it can heal you can do some health regeneration so that's pretty cool removes all debuffs from all allies then places block debuffs on all allies for two turns and if a boss is present buff is protected which is really cool again head of mischief if he takes the block debuffs and spreads it on the entire team what i always almost have to do if i don't have somebody like michinaki to cleanse or what do you call it remove those buffs i have to wait until those buffs fall off before i can do what i need to do place more debuffs so this is pretty nice that it's protected it's on a three turn cooldown a2 is on a three turn cooldown alatreon divinity fills this champion's turn meter by 5% every, uh, <laughs> every, every time every time a debuff is placed on them. Also heals this champion by 5% of their max HP whenever a debuff is placed on them or expired. That is a pretty nice thing to have because we're keeping ourselves alive and we're making more turns or we're, we're making more moves, I should say. Increase speed in dungeons by 30%, which is pretty huge. 19 from Cal. 20 from Uko. Lissandra gives 24. Mordo is 23, right? 24 also. On my account, at least, Alatreon is going to be the fastest speed booster when it comes to auras. Thank you to everybody who voted on the thumbnail. Thank you for 642 subs. He is a champion who is highly reviewed. He seems like a generally useful, amazing champion all around. Do not blindly copy masteries, but feel free to blindly copy these masteries. So I'm going to explain why I chose these masteries. If you want to stick around, go ahead and listen. If you want, the time codes are down below. So because Alatreon Blade Master is going to be more of a supportive role on my Hydra team, or I guess in any team that I... I mean, my dungeon teams are pretty much already set. That's why I'm not really thinking of him in the context of dungeons, but more so in Hydra. Even though I one key everything i feel like this is where he would mostly have some play so with that context shared with you guys we're going with extra res because he still needs resistance there's nothing in here that says that he can't get feared or stunned or provoked there is this if he has enough if he's fast enough if he can place the block buffs up before any of the the buffs are um the debuffs are placed then that'll obviously protect him, but that's still on a three turn cooldown. I'm going to still try to build him with res. We're gonna do rejuvenation to increase the amount of healing and the value of shields that this champion receives. So he does place a shield, places a shield on himself. So that's an extra 5% for his own shield. For his second tier two mastery, I couldn't really decide between blast proof, which decreases damage from AOE, by 5% and pretty much every boss, especially in Hydra, that I go up against will do AoEs. 
or if I wanted improved parry, which decreases damage by 8% when this champion's hit by a critical hit. I think either or, you're good to go. If you wanted to, go down this side and pick up Wisdom of Battle, which has a 30% chance of placing block buffs whenever you have any of these buffs expired on them. So there's that. You know, there's nothing wrong with going there either. But I went down this path. I'm a little more used to this path anyway. So there's a little bit of a bias there. Resurgent will have a 50% chance to remove a random debuff when this champion loses 25% or more of their max HP from a single enemy skill. Then we have Solidarity. I've never actually used this, but seeing as Alatreon does a lot of buffs on his entire team, and I expect to build him fairly quickly, and there's two other masteries in here that manipulate his own turn meter, I thought this might be fun. So, increase ally res by 5 for each buff placed on them by this champion. As you know, especially in the upper echelons of Hydra, you're going to need a lot of resistance. So this does help out. It's not going to be a crazy amount. I mean, he places, what, at max 3, that's an extra 15 res. But it's still something, and you know I've never used it, so it's kind of fun, I guess. We get some damage mitigation up to 6% every time he is hit by the same boss. Cycle of Revenge will give him a 50% chance of increasing his turn meter by 15% when an ally is hit by a crit. Only once per turn. Then we have Retribution, which gives a chance to counterattack whenever this champion loses 25% of their own max HP from a single hit. And the reason I want counterattack on him is because of his A1, which increases two random buffs on all allies. So the more counterattacks we can do, the better. You could go deterrence, because especially in Hydra, you're going to be going up against fears quite often. So there's nothing wrong with getting deterrence if you feel like you don't want Cycle of Revenge. But this is just what I chose. These masteries could change in the future. These masteries could be wrong. If I see another CC who has a better build than I do, I am more than happy to, more so inclined to want to improve my own build uh, after I've learned maybe something from the community. But this is just this is just what I have right now at first face value, at first test, I should say. Steadfast, extra, extra HP, but that's mainly just to get over here. I mean, I guess you could have gone extra accuracy, but you don't need it. We're taking Shield Bearer, increase the value of shields by 5%. He casts shields, so let's go ahead and buff those up. Again, Healing Savior will increase the amount of shield buffs by 10% if the target ally has 40%. So if anybody in our team is a little bit less or 40% or lower, the shield that he places is going to be even bigger. Rapid Response will give a 30% chance of increasing turn meter by 10% when a buff is removed or expired. So eventually his buffs will fall off. We want a chance to increase turn meter because we want to keep those buffs coming, those cleanses coming as much as possible. We also have Cycle of Magic to decrease a random skill, the cooldown of a random skill, I should say, at the start of every turn. So a 5% chance could proc, especially if you make him really fast, if he's taking a lot of turns, more on that in a bit. Lasting Gifts, we're going to extend, a chance to extend any buffs cast by this champion by one turn. So those shields, the increased defense, the block buffs, chance to extend that whenever he does place it. Because he is a support champion for me, we're using Timely Intervention. Increases this champion's turn meter whenever an ally hero drops below 25%. So anytime someone is in a, oh crap, I might die situation, he's going to get a boost to turn meter so that he can hopefully place his shields in time. Okay, so now I have him built, and we're going to talk about what I prioritized in terms of stats. So prioritizing HP, speed, and also resistance. 400 is the minimum that I set for myself whenever I'm going into Hydra. The more, the better. We don't need accuracy or anything else. I'm not trying to do damage with him. I actually don't know if he's a damage dealer, but his multipliers were only at like a 0.2, I think, 0.22. Defense is also nice to have, but because we have shields and I'm banking on having big shields and a lot of shields, then I didn't really prioritize defense. Here are the pieces of gear. We have him in Relentless and Immortal. 
I know some of you guys like to look at the pieces of gear, so here we are. I didn't have enough. I haven't farmed Sand Devil in a while, so we don't have any oils to ascend these. But you would want more HP or speed on the boots if you can get speed. Here are the rings and the banner. So he's in Immortal because I want him to heal. And I put him in Relentless, so I wanted him fast, and I wanted him to take as many turns as possible. So with Relentless, we get an 18% chance of taking an extra turn. Let me show you the final stats here. Final stats. Almost 82,000 HP, 3,400, almost 3,500 defense, 263 speed. It's decent in a perfect world. If I got to choose, I would have 300 plus, but it's okay. This, this is what I have currently. And 419 resistance. Solid, I think. And we're going to try this out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and try him out against the Hard 10 Dragon. I want to see how much of a difference an extra 30% to speed makes. And I want to see what these shields do against the Hard 10 Dragon. So let's see. So we place our debuffs. We got our buffs up. Seer will clear through the waves. Reset. Repeat. So the waves are pretty much done here. And now we're going up against the boss. We have our debuff, block debuffs up, so none of this goes, uh, but it's out of tune. We would have wanted to get the Hex up first on this dragon so that the poisons that he places gets reflected, and that plays a big role in speedrunning the Hard 10 dragon. All right, perfect. Seer is dead. We don't want her around here. But look at that. Alatreon is keeping himself and everybody else alive. There we go. Nice, okay. So usually the way this works is Teo is the last one standing and he's able to just solo the dragon, but the three of them are still alive here. Totally fine. Of course, Alatreon is still alive. Nice, okay. But let's see what the hard ice golem has to say about him. All right, so here we are. We're gonna clear through these waves. It's my first time running stage six. Yumiko resets here, place the debuffs. There we go. Probably should have turned that off for Cronum so he doesn't waste his burn here. Those two are dead. We want Cronum. Oh, wait a minute. Jamars is not in here. I'm pleasantly surprised because I've, you know, this stage I haven't been able to do before. But he his shields are massive. His cleanses are extremely useful. Wow, look at that. My first time running this. 2 minutes 23 seconds on hard 6. That is interesting. I did not expect that. Whoa. Now let's try stage 7 because that's... Wow. Alatreon, that's massive. Wow. I've never gotten this far before with hard ice golem. I was stuck doing 1 and 2. We gotta try 8. We gotta push it to 8. We gotta see. Let's try it. Cronum is negative affinity here. I could think of a different HP burner to bring in. That way I don't have to really rely on having Jamarsa in the team, because Jamarsa is just here to die. She's just there to activate Cronum's passives. Let me target the Hard Ice Golem here. Oh my gosh, guys. I ended the fight. You, you guys, Alatreon basically soloed it by himself. With all of his, you can probably peek in the background. Everybody else is dead but Alatran was able to do it all by himself. He took enough turns, the Relentless popped off, he had enough resist where the heal reductions and the decreased defense from the minions didn't even place, except for when there was a 3%er. But Alatran did it all by himself. Granted, it took over 30 minutes, and we almost reached the turn limit here, but the fact that he did it by himself, that he was untouchable, that his health was still, if you can look very close, I might zoom in, if you look very closely, his health is still full. His shield and the amount of turns that he was taking, the speed he was at which he was going is was keeping him alive, uh, along with the immortal set that I have on him. So Relentless Immortal, I'm even more convinced that I like him in that set. So knowing how the, the Ice Golem cleanses his debuffs. Okay, wow, we did stage nine alatreon got us the stage nine of the hard ice golem we can do this he's doing it come on man you got it 
You got it. He's gonna come back. All right. Now it's down to Cronum. Can Cro Do I have a decreased attack champion though? Can Artek do a better job than Cronum? To be honest, I've never even worked with Artek before. Let's see if this this will do it. All right, here we are. Hard ten, never done before. Let's see if this team can do it. We have Brogni paired with Alatreon to extend the size of our shields to remove any extra debuffs to also place shields and the increased attack as well as block debuffs just in case extra coverage and we have our attack here who's going to be our main source of damage with his hp burns and we'll see if these shields can keep everybody alive the nice thing about having brogni here is not only are we reflecting damage whenever they hit us with the shields we're also healing ourselves by a certain amount whenever our shields are hit and keeping decreased attack on the hard ice golem i'm learning is a huge thing as well because he hits mighty hard we got the decreased attack got our shields up it's like alatreon might enable me to do this that remove debuff the block buffs it's massive we gotta get that shield up though there we did there it is uh oh there's the other shield there you go full coverage and then I, I just have to figure out a way to perfect this, because this is close. Even if it fails, this is pretty close. And even if it doesn't work on this stage, I could drop stages and fall. Wow! That is my first time ever doing Hard Ice Golem 10. And Alatreon Blademaster was able to help me do that. He's getting a 5. I, I haven't even taken him into Hydra yet. He's getting a 5 all around. That's, that's, wow. Bravo. Was he worth it? Yeah, because now I can do hard 10 ice school. I mean, I'm going to run it one more time just to see. I had never done hard ice school in 10 before. I was stuck doing one and two. Wow. Okay, let's just do it one more time. Going to leave full auto, not clicking anything. We'll just see what happens. Like I said, I've never used our tag before. I mean, not never, but I've never paid attention to him. Not until now. Wow. I can now do hard ice school in 10. But now let's go ahead and take him into the place that I wanted to take him into initially, Hydra. I just basically took my regular hard slash brutal team for Hydra, and I threw him in instead of Inquisitor Shamael. So I'm going to let it play on auto, and we'll talk about things here and there. If you've seen one Hydra fight, you've pretty much seen them all. I'll skip to the end and you guys can see the end results. Hey guys, we just hit the turn limit here and it looks like we're coming to an end because the Hydra Heads are starting to eat all of my champions at a very fast rate. It was amazing because Alatran was able to keep the most important buffs up protected, namely the block debuffs buff, which oftentimes would get stolen by the head of mischief and then spread which effectively either ends the run because i'm sol or it extends the run a lot longer than it needs to or it also means that those are just turns that i can't put out more damage and for something like hydro clash if you do care about it every turn kind of does count because every little bit does count he was able to keep us alive with his shields and with extending the duration of the buffs on my team in addition to Taurus who also does that for the entire team as well but Alatreon was able to do the bluff the buff cleanses as well and place the block buffs again all protected that was probably the best part this head right here the head that provokes whenever I got provoked or had decreased attack on me Alatreon was able to cleanse that place the block buffs on top of that the head of wrath hits extremely hard but with the shield pretty much did nothing Cardiel coming in at 22 million. Alatreon not doing much for damage, but he was able to enable the entire team to do damage. Now, if only I could go and try out Ner Gigante in Hydra. <laughs>